Good morning to you, my friends, or good afternoon or evening, wherever you may be in the world today. Alan Clements here from Maui, Hawaii. Uh, today, October 10th, 2021, uh, if I may, just a short introduction to a series of talks that I wish to give, God willing, today, uh, for however long they may last, a few days, I'm not sure. Uh, but the topic, uh, a protest talk, a series of protests um, for my beloved Myanmar, Burma, for Do Aung San Suu Kyi, for the people of the country struggling for democracy the right to, to dream in freedom from fear. To the, to the war on, I should say, the genocidal war on democracy that, I, that is engulfing our freedoms worldwide. Um, it seems essential for me. I pray for you as well that you will join me in these series of talks to unite in our own way as best as possible, hold heart and hand and conscience in solidarity wherever you may feel it, to be a force multiplier, to believe in the power of action, to enlist inspire, bring on board friends and family and strangers, cross bridges to rise up at this point in global history and let our voices be heard, let our actions be seen, let our dignity and conscience rise high in the sky of freedom now and the future of freedom tomorrow. And, and bring forth the power of our ethical, spiritual, mindful intelligence, political intelligence, social intelligence, psychological wisdom, the, the, the heartbeat of democracy, human beings in respect for the universality of human rights, speaking up on the, on the streets of the globe in villages and urban centers worldwide in our own humble, wild, protest-driven way. Speak up at this time for the people of Burma, citizens of planet Earth, putting it all on the line for democracy, for freedom, for the universality of human rights, for decency, for the, for the right to dream and to create a vision of peace and hope for the children and for the future of life. I'm impassioned this morning, and I hope to be for the rest of the week, God willing, in this series of talks. Now, coming to the conclusion of this very brief introduction, um, based upon the good support of my longtime colleagues, Fergus Harlow, uh, Jeffrey Hellman, the audio engineer and the artist who Along with me and other people, we have released today, it's finally dropped after 25 years, the audio book for the epic, crazy, interesting, compelling book with Do Aung San Suu Kyi titled by her, Voice of Hope. The people are the voices of hope. Along with her colleagues, the co-founders of the National League for Democracy, the NLD, uh, the NAICA of the NLD, the oldest living member, U Tin U, a remarkable gentleman, a mentor, a friend, a former Buddhist monk, a former general of the army under the dictator that imprisoned many of these people, Nay Win, who's perished, and whose descendant, Tan Shui, and the present evil incarnate, Ming Online, he confronted 
with conscience, formed a nonviolent entity that represents the voice of the people, not just in Myanmar, but the voice of those in the world who love freedom and democracy. U Tin U is in this audio book, along with U Chi Meng, a remarkable genius of a mind, and so many others. This audio book, unfortunately, based upon Da Aung San Suu Kyi's incarceration, being imprisoned in an Orwellian military tribunal by Ming Online in an undisclosed location somewhere in her native country of Myanmar, <clears throat> she is sitting, standing, breathing in dignity and conscience without a voice in any way other than our voices for the people, an elected official, a state councillor, a Nobel Peace Laureate, a committed politician, a meditator, a Dhamma savant, a student of the late Venerable Seda Upandita, a breathtaking expression, humble, human, flawed, yes, of democracy in action. Her voice, 15 hours in this audiobook. May I encourage you, I had to read both parts. She's imprisoned. Bring her words. They're not her words alone. They are the words of the people, the words of people worldwide who love freedom, the right to dream, the right to live in peace and safety. May I encourage you, spread word of this audiobook, the ebook, whatever you need to do to promote, to support the voice of Da Aung San Suu Kyi, Utin, U, Uchi Meng, and many others, bring them to the forefront of conscience in the world. Send this audiobook to President Biden. Send it to the United Nations. Send it to all ambassadors and representatives of civilized nations worldwide. I also want to speak about the assault on our rights worldwide that are happening in my own native country of America by this absurd totalitarian mandate by the totalitarian Joseph President U.S. illegitimate President Biden, who seems to be a man driven by profit and privilege and aspiring to fall into the footsteps of Xi Jinping of China and the desecration of the boys and girls, the women and the men of Hong Kong, democracy under assault. Over a year and a half ago, I spoke out about Burma when I released our books with Fergus Harlow, my colleague and co-author, Burma's Voices of Freedom. We called, I called, we called Burma the next Tibet and what has happened? Burma, Ming Online, is a running dog of the totalitarian, nuclear-armed, bioweapon-driven premier of China, not the people of China, Xi Jinping. Burma has become the next Tibet for oil, gems, resources, gas, and this assault on human life worldwide, making good people around the world slaves to the totalitarian nightmare. This audiobook isn't just about Da Aung San Suu Kyi. It is not 25 years ago. I've recently reread it, felt it, articulated it in 15 hours of audiobook. It is a breathtaking expression a template, if you will, a handbook to confront totalitarianism, violent mandates. Who would ever have imagined 25 years hence from us sitting in her home in Rangoon for six months in conversation secretly where these tapes were smuggled out of the country? In fact, they weren't smuggled out. The transcripts were smuggled out. 15 years after they were smuggled out, only did we get the audio tapes out. This is a template, a handbook 
on how to confront what appears to be not only a war on democracy, but a genocidal war on democracy, certainly in Myanmar, certainly in China, certainly in Tibet, certainly in Hong Kong. And it seems to be moving around the world. There's an assault, a medical assault, a political assault, a social assault, a spiritual assault, an existential assault on our freedom of choice. And we must, I beg of you, employ you, encourage you, inspire you, rise up in your most humble, beautiful, courageous, radiant way not wait for tonight or this afternoon, but today. Find ways to express your dissent to this ongoing mandate of an assault on our biological autonomy, on our minds. We refuse to be told what to do. It is our time to couple our yoga, our dharma, our mindfulness, our meditation, all our religions in solidarity and say no in radical dissent to the tyranny of leadership, of governments, men and women worldwide who are trying to assault us physically, mentally, spiritually, and existentially with their totalitarian blindness, whether it be through guns, oil, drugs, needles, whatever you consider to be your need to tell us how to live. This global war on freedom of expression, freedom of mind, and freedom of a choice, we are saying no. This audiobook, and I've listened to it, I've read it, studied it. It is a handbook. It is a template for all of us to rise up and to challenge every man and woman in the world, whether it be in our home, in our elected temples of power, in Wall Street, in Silicon Valley, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, wherever we may find it challenge authority, challenge dictatorship, challenge mandates, get out onto the digital streets, on the physical streets, everywhere worldwide. This is our moment to take back our planet. It's happened in Hong Kong. It's happened in Tibet. It's happened in large swaths of China. They're taking our forests, they're taking our oceans, they're taking our right to choose our destiny, they're taking our democracy, our hard-earned human rights, and we are saying no. And we are releasing this book along with all the people who volunteer at World Dharma. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Be a force multiplier. On my Facebook page, please take our announcement for the audiobook the voice of hope. May I encourage you, share it, not just once or twice. Write a note to all of your friends to share it. Let it go viral. Why not? Who gives a damn about someone singing a song only on TikTok? Who cares? Rap artists, hip-hop singers, rock stars, musicians, artists, activists, leaders worldwide, take up this audiobook. May I encourage you, get over your apathy. Get over your dislike of whatever it is in me. Who cares about me? Stand up for freedom, for the voice of the children. Give them a right to dream. The people of Burma are bleeding. It's a war, a genocidal war on their freedoms and their democracy. Share these videos. Join me in this series of protest talks every day for the next coming days, I don't know how long, God willing, I want to turn my attention to something other than me. I want to turn it to freedom of expression, freedom of thought, and to turn back those authoritarian people telling us how to think, 
how to live and what we ingest, what we put in our mind, what we put in our body, we are saying no. It is a time of protest and dissent. So thank you from my heart. I'm going to lose it in my own humble, tender, crazy, mad way to extemporaneously speak about the beauty in my life in the gift of Dhamma, the gift of democracy, the gift of ethical courage, the gift of mindful intelligence that I have been bequeathed, that I have learned and earned from the good people of Myanmar, of Burma, a remarkable country, remarkable people worldwide. Yes, I have a special relationship to the people of Burma. It is my spiritual home. It is my home of political activism, spiritual activism. It's my birthplace of democracy in action. These are my brothers and my sisters and my uncles and my mentors and my teachers and the good voices of freedom and mindfulness around the world. Burma is one of those rare epic places. And those of you who have been there, those of you who know the country, those of you who know the people, you know that I am underestimating. I am being humble in my respect for them. They are awe-inspiring. They are willing to go to prison, to be tortured and to die, to fight the good fight. That is an epic expression in my heart and mind of courage and grace and freedom in action. So this is our moment. I'm making it my moment. I'm inviting you in my own heartfelt way. Please join me in these series of protest talks today for the coming days in support of democracy in Burma, the people of Burma, and democracy worldwide, not just in Burma. I'm going to tie it in to everything that I see valuable in my life, including dissent, radical disobedience, radical civil, spiritual, religious, political disobedience to the president of my country and all the running dogs who were sold out to the mandate of totalitarian measures. We refuse to participate in your tyranny. It doesn't mean that we are anti-democratic. It doesn't mean that we are anti-vaccine. That is so absurd. We are smart. We are informed. We read, we research, we study science and data and politics. We think for ourselves. We are freedom lovers. Join me in this protest to those who don't think for themselves and they think about their wallets, their profits, their privilege, and their denial of decency. Shame on you. Let's mock them through art and satire and comedy and creative prose and improvisational riffs on the stage of freedom to confront the injustice of dictatorship and totalitarianism. And I don't care whether you call yourself a democratically elected, stolen election president. You're a liar, you're a thief. And frankly, you should step down immediately. All people should step down. It's a shame on freedom to see what the United Nations Security Council does. And I can't wait for my friend, Bessie Cotteray from Albania, the ambassador who will soon be on that United Nations Security Council coming up in January, a voice of conscience. Take back the planet. Take back Earth. Take back our freedom. Take back democracy an end to tyranny, an end to totalitarianism. Stop Xi Jinping. Stop Davos. Stop the oligarchs in Wall Street, in London, in Paris, wherever they are in the world, offshore accounts worldwide. Stop the lie. It is our time to protest and creatively express our conscience and our dignity 
again in support of the radical, courageous people at this moment bleeding and crying and singing songs of their heart in Burma. They refuse to lie down and cower as they go home to home, apartment to apartment. They're not hiding. They're resisting totalitarian dictatorship. They are an example of courage in creative expression. And this is a chance with the release of this audiobook, The Voice of Hope. May I encourage you, please share that post, share this video, not once, twice, a hundred times to groups worldwide, individuals on Instagram, on Twitter, repost it, retweet it, reshare it, send it, send it, send it, send it, send it, go to the post and send it, send it, send it. This is our time. This is our moment. There isn't a minute to waste. Democracy is under assault. There's a genocide going on. There is a war going on. This audiobook and our books, Burma's Voices of Freedom, The Voice of Hope, the audiobook, The Voice of Hope, these are templates to challenge totalitarianism. And who would ever have imagined that totalitarianism is now knocking on every one of our doors? They want our arm. They want our money. They want our lives. They want us to be manipulated by their mind control, their indoctrination. These books are a study in misinformation, on Orwellianism, on, on indoctrination, on the challenge to dictatorship, on courage, on finding mindful passion to overcome your fear. They're a template. They're a yoga practice. They're a meditation practice. Study the words of these radical activists who have employed meditation, mindfulness, spirituality, and psychological insight into their roles as political, social, spiritual activists. So from my heart to yours, thank you for tuning in. Join me in this series of protest songs coming up today and through the week. I'm going to lose it and burn here on the anti-cross of my own transformation into a higher order creature. I want to live in the radiance and support of my elders, my friends, my mentors, my family members. They have given me the gift of being in association with Dharma, with meditation. And I've seen in my own humble way, the tyranny of dictatorship. It starts small. I've studied it in Burma. I've seen it in war zones. It starts small. The next thing you know, mentally and emotionally and psychologically, you begin to be corrupted and you protect yourself and you begin to lie a little bit and you begin to cower and contort and misinform yourself. You stop shaping yourself into the beauty that you are. You stop dreaming. You start looking at ways to overcome censorship. You start cowering. You start manipulating yourself into the dungeons of your own denial and your fear. And the next thing you know, you're a running dog of the dictator itself. And you have forgot your freedom. You forgot your spine. You forgot your conscience. Rise up. Find creative ways to speak up. Go to the streets of Kahului, of Honolulu, of New York, of Philadelphia, of Paris, of London, of Melbourne. Protest, protest, protest. Refuse to listen to the tyranny of leaders who are pledging their absence of love and conscience to the dollar, to the yen, to the jet, to the oil, to the ruby. They want to chain us and make us slaves to their idiocy. This is our moment to refuse, to disobey, and creatively invent 10 million different ways to speak from our heart. Speak up. We got the power of love, man. We got the power of music on our side. They don't even like music. 
They have no idea what it means to dance naked in the moonlight of democracy. They refuse to look up at the stars and, and wonder, who are we? Where are we? What is this about? They refuse to put on their tongue psilocybin. They refuse to put DMT. They refuse to put even the smallest dose of LSD. They refuse to participate in the transformation of their own stupidity. They're locked into Neanderthal states of dictatorship. Why? Who knows? We've all faced it. We all struggle. We've all had to fight ourselves out of the cave of conformity. We are now outside of that cave and we're looking back in and we're saying, come on guys. And they're basically saying, no, screw you. We're going to bring you back in and chain you to the wall and make you a shadow creature of our need and our fear. We're going to violate you on the back wall of our deception. And we refuse to participate in your stupid cathedral of fear. We're going to break down the walls of your Vatican. We are many. You are few. You've got a few guns. We'll stick this into the rifle and turn it on your own mind. Your wife, your husband will leave you. They're ashamed of you. There's a million different ways in which we can satirize, create comedy and humor. Call it gallows humor on you, man. We refuse to participate in the rise of the Fourth Reich, and they want us. These mandates today are one thing. Then come the gun. Then comes the persecution. Then comes what? Depopulation, global genocide. It's on the books. People are talking about it. These books, Burma's Voices of Freedom, the audiobook with Do Aung San Suu Kyi, U Tianu, U Chi Meng, these are templates to find the courage to not participate in the lie. Please listen to these audiobooks. Please share them worldwide. Share this video, share our post today on the release after 25 years. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Fergus. Thank you, the good people of Burma for smuggling these things out for the transcriptions. We actually have, based upon the good, courageous, underground support, I can't say who, the original audio recordings, got original video recordings. If any of you out there who are documentary filmmakers, audio engineers, video editors, come in, help. This is the moment we have the material. This is an audiobook of those six months of underground conversations that changed my life. Back in 95 and 96, they are timeless. May I encourage you, please spread. Please be a force multiplier. Share, 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 share. Please share, share, share. Go right now and share the post everywhere. Why wait? Don't be exhausted or tired. Share, share. The people of Burma right now, they are crying in their hope for support, but they are not cowering in fear. Study their music, their art, the videos, the photography, the testimonials. My friend Joa, Insight Myanmar podcast, listen to every one of his podcasts with courageous people coming out of Burma talking and a few people who have escaped talking about the breathtaking beauty of the courage of the people to confront dictatorship. So from my heart to yours, thank you for tuning in. Please share these videos. Please share our announcement of the audiobook and acquire the audiobook on Amazon and Audible. It's the best distribution that we have available to us right now. Spread it worldwide for the people of Burma, for democracy, for the right for the children to dream and to the fight that we are embarking upon not just a protest, we're going to challenge the genocidal war on democracy worldwide, wherever we see it.
from my heart to yours. Thank you for joining me in this, this series of protest talks and hope to see you tomorrow, God willing, here at 930 from Hawaii. Thank you.